Welcome to this special video featuring the private owner of mineral wagons of yesteryear. In this video I'll try and tell you part of the story behind these colourful and varied wagons and present a database to help with your own collection. The time period I'll be looking at is post World War I and a little after World War II. Each train I show you will be made up of wagons that may have been seen about the big four regions. Now, while 2636 Terrier class, scratch built in the 1950s by my dad, prepares the first train, let me try and give you a little background to this complex but fascinating story. Moving coal was always the biggest business of our railways. From after the 1950s, most people had regular deliveries of domestic coal and industries relied on it. Prior to World War II, private owner coal wagons were the most common. By and large, they fell into four groups. Number one, the largest fleets were colliery wagons owned by the mines. These displayed the name of the colliery on their sides. Two, colliery agents who sold the coal from groups of mines. These firms usually provided wagons of their own as well as using colliery stock that was leased to them. Three, the local coal merchant who might have a fleet of just a few wagons had the name of the merchant and the name of the station where he had his yard or siding. The wagon was usually owned by the wagon manufacturer and leased to the merchant. And four, large companies such as trawler fleets, gas companies or companies that use large amounts of coal or who moved stone and other minerals for their own business. Now that the Terrier has built the train, we now need the main train loco. Clearly we're on the southern region and therefore a C2X seems a great choice. This one also built by my dad. The wagons in this train all originated on the southern, their owners being based here. But of course, depending on where they obtain their supplies of coal from could mean the wagons turning up almost anywhere on the whole network.
Local coal merchants in the summer season, when the house coal was not needed, might use their wagons for other businesses, like building materials. Or he might rent his wagon out to a builder for the summer months. Lots of scope there for modelling. The colliery owned and colliery agents wagons did wander far and wide, as people often specified a particular coal for a given job. For example, anthracite coal, which burnt cleanly and very hot, was required in brewing. We are now switching to the Great Western region, and once again a small tank engine, this time a Great Western Pannier by Replica, is making up the train. Pooling wagons was first introduced during the First World War and greatly reduced the movement of empty wagons on the system. The pool was of interest to large colliery owned fleets. Local traders with just a couple of wagons would not have participated. Wagon building companies produced coal wagons to railway clearinghouse specifications that were sold or leased out to traders. Wagons from far apart destinations such as Scotland and England were unlikely to ever be seen together. A more correct assembly would be two or three local merchants wagons together with one or more colliery agents and colliery wagons. A coal merchant's wagon was mainly confined to the circuit working between the colliery supplying the coal and the station at which the load was received.
Now our train is made up and ready for the train loco to take it to its destinations. In this case we have a very appropriate Great Western 5600 class coal tank by Backman. Wagons used by colliery agents covered a very wide area of operation. As an example, a load of coal could be ordered by a merchant for a load of Yorkshire coal. This would eventually appear at Coal Merchants Depot or Coal Yard, even though this depot was situated in the south. This specially ordered coal would have been conveyed either in colliery or wagons operated by the colliery agent. Wagons used by gas companies, glass bottle manufacturers, jam and chocolate manufacturers, iron and steel companies usually were operated between the operators, works and the colliery from where they obtain their coal supply. Our trip around the Big Four has brought us to the LMS, one of the biggest areas of operation for these wagons. This time a Midland Dealey rebuild by drying is setting about building up the trains. When the Second World War started, the private owner coal, coke and iron ore wagons were requisitioned by the government under the Ministry of Supply and pulled for the duration of the war. When the war ended, these wagons were not returned to their owners but were purchased from them at a fixed price regardless of condition.
There were some orders for new private owner wagons after the war, but it soon became apparent that the government was set on a complete nationalisation of the railways, and these orders had stopped by 1948. Some of the new private owner mineral wagons built immediately after the war remained in operation as private owner wagons until the mid 50s. Our LMS trains are now ready to depart, and here again is our train loco, this time a 39-year-old Airfix 4F. And because there are so many wagons to move, we also have this LMS Black 5 by Hornby heading off to another yard. Most coal wagons from the late 1950s would be in BR livery, although a few were in wartime Ministry of Transport, MOT, livery, black with large white MOT initials on the sides, or on that later. The design favoured after the war were the well-known 16-ton mineral wagon and 21-ton hoppers. Our model wagons were beautifully turned out by Mainline, a really sad loss to the model railway community when Palatoy pulled the plug on them. However, you can still obtain many of these wagons second hand, and it is a testament to the quality of the models that they are still very good all these years later. You have also seen wagons by Batman, Airfix, Hornby and Oxford Rail. Private owner liveried coal wagons had virtually disappeared by the early 1960s, but BR did paint some of its own wagons in the livery of major customers. Some 21 ton hoppers for example, and I'll show you a late 50s early 60s train after we visit the LNER. Now what better LNER shunting loco could we have other than a J72 named Joan by Mainline? Again I've done a lot of research work to find out where these well known ready to run wagons were based, or at least likely to have been based. Sources such as the ever helpful members on RMWeb and several websites that I'll include in the video's description box. A 
about by database. This MS Excel spreadsheet will allow you to sort trains by region, wagon type and period, and will allow you to add your own wagons to it. By way of example of the pitfalls in trying to compile a database of this kind, take a look at the HC ball wagon you saw in the LMS train. Note it's marked out as being LMS and LNER, but what great detail. Now our J72 has made up the train, it's time for our penultimate coal and mineral train to head off, hauled by this Backman V2 named Coldstreamer. So in this video's description box you will find a link to my Google Drive, Model Railways Unlimited folder and the MSXL database I have mentioned. When you follow the link, the database will open. Over on the top right, third from the left, is the download arrow. The database holds unique wagon details for each private owner wagon I own. It's currently sorted under description, but you can change the filters as required by clicking on the downward arrow right of each required column. For example, if you choose region post group, you will get the following options. Choose the region you want or select A to Z to organise the wall. Now I'm not saying I'm 100% correct and it would be great if viewers could help us all improve the database and of course in model railways rule number one always applies. It's your railway so run what you like. Where there are two or more railway companies operating over the same lines I have included the main company followed by the secondary one. It's probably impossible to tell now 
where some of the merchants have their sidings or which company they use to convey their wagons. But we can look back and attempt to recreate what must have been a varied and interesting railway operation. this look at wonderful wagons and I'll leave you with a typical mineral train of the late 1950s and early 60s pulled by my Hornby BR Black S15. Yes she's still working. Stay tuned for more. Goodbye.